doorway to Nightmare. Nightmare. host, Artemis Black. Milton College is one of those small campuses that teach what some would call off-handed subjects. While not as large as Yale or Harvard, it has produced some of the finest minds in the land. Right now, Professor Erica Collins is hurrying to her small class of bright-eyed students. She is young, idealistic, and teaches for the sheer joy of it. She is the idol of her students, both male and female, a petite blonde and blue-eyed star of the academic world. settle down so that we can begin. Now then, we shall continue our discussion on the Egyptian religions prior to the rise of Christianity. Before we begin, I have something very special to show to you. I have here a most wonderful find. Professor Knox has been leading an archaeological dig and came across this last year. He was kind enough to let me borrow it. Looks like those pages are ready to fall apart. <laughs> You're right, Robert. They are very old. About seven or eight thousand years old. But what are they, Miss Collins? I have what Professor Knox believes are the missing pieces of the papyrus ripped from the scroll from the Book of Dead that was discovered some thirty years ago. He has only been able to translate a small portion of it, but he thinks that he is on the right track. I thought that was a myth. There are many truths that lie in ancient myths. Truths of humanity, spirituality, and things beyond. Perhaps there is a sensual side to death, according to the Book of the Dead. Now, I want you all to come up here and take a look at these. Fascinating, don't you think? What does it say? Well, according to Professor Knox, these pages were translated about Hathor, Ra's feminine counterpart, who had a vengeful aspect that protected him from his enemies. Today so happens to be the 20th, a day of commemorating this particular deity. Maybe we could use that to bring some life into the football team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry, Robert. As the star quarterback, I'm sure that you will be fine. Anyway, Hathor could cross the mortal boundaries. She wasn't all bad. She did love music, dance, love, and sexuality along with the maternal side. I'm sure that if you wanted to protect a football team, she would be more than willing. <laughs> More temples were dedicated to her than any other goddess. She is a sky deity. She was the mother of the gods Horus and Ra. She was considered the mother to the pharaohs. Although, she did have a vengeful side and protected the gods from their enemies. She was depicted as a woman wearing what appeared to be a sun disk, which often resembled a halo and horns. It is quite remarkable that the ancient Egyptians would have something like this. So what can be done with this parchment? Well, Betty, we use it as an attempt to finalize the pieces of the puzzle about that culture. Now, there are so many unanswered questions that I find exciting. Okay, if you've all had a good look, I'm going to put them back in the notebook. I promised the professor that I would be most careful with them. Ow! Ow! Darn it! Miss Collins, are you okay? Mm. Yes, Robert. I'm fine. Stupid notebook bit me. 
Not a mortal wound. Just a little blood. I will be okay. Miss Collins! Miss Collins! Good afternoon, Dean Higgins. Miss Collins, we missed you at the faculty meeting. Yes, I know. I- I'm sorry, but I had a student that needed my full attention, and I just couldn't make it. In the future, Miss Collins, please regulate your time so that you can attend. Now, here are the notes from the meeting. If you have any questions, feel free to come to my office tomorrow morning. Old man Higgins getting you down? Oh! Bob! You startled me. Why didn't you just tell him that you were meeting me for dinner? Teachers are not supposed to be dating each other. You know that. Hey, what he doesn't know. Could get us both fired. We have to be more careful. Even though I want to put my hands all over you right now? Shh! Someone could hear you. Want to go to the broom closet for several minutes of heavy breathing? (laughs) No! (laughs) I have to get this back to Professor Knox. But, I will see you later tonight, won't I? Oh, you know that you will. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, Hey, what happened to your finger? Oh, that. The stupid notebook bit me. It pinched my finger. Nothing too serious. Don't worry about it. Uh, You should really be more careful. I know, but, I mean, a few drops of blood is not going to kill me. (laughs) No. Don't. I won't. I won't. I won't. Eric. Stop Eric, it. wake up. Wake up. What? Oh, wow. That was the worst nightmare. It's okay. It was just a dream. But it seems so real. Are you okay? I'm not quite sure. Well, it's almost six anyway. Uh, I'll get the coffee. You need to get dressed and and get back to your own home. Oh, why don't we just stay here the entire day? Oh, a nice thought, my love, but hardly conducive for the student body. Dean Higgins? Are you here? Come in, Miss Collins. I'm sorry that I didn't see you this morning, but... Do you wish to sever your relationship with this university? Well, no, but I... Then when I say morning, I mean morning. It is now after six o'clock, and I'm ready to go home. Are you sure that you want to go home, Roger? Kindly address me as Dean Higgins, if you please, Miss Collins. Oh, hush, hush. Why must we be so formal? Why don't I get a little more comfortable? Miss Collins, please! Don't tell me that you don't want this. I want you. Please, Miss Collins, I'm a married man. What's that got to do with anything? It's simply a natural human thing. Here, let me help you with your shirt. I think you would better leave. Now. Oh, I don't think so. This is a lovely letter opener. Did your wife give it to you? Now, please, Miss Collins. <sighs> Call me Hathor. And let me at that big, delicious heart of yours. Miss Collins? I know there's a good piece in there somewhere. Are those horns growing out of your head? No. For God's sake, stop! No! Me like it! (laughs) Tell me you like it. Tell me you like it. It appears that there is a lot more going on at the university than simple studying. I don't recall college being this deadly, but then I never studied ancient religions. I'll return shortly with Act 2.
Erica Collins, a professor of ancient religions, accidentally punctured her finger on the rings of a binder that held an ancient parchment. They are believed to be part of a missing section from the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Presently, she is still sleeping when the hard knocking on her door arouses her. Erica? Erica! Are you in there? Oh, my head. Bob? Let me in, Erica! Hang on! Erica, it's urgent! Give me a damn minute, will ya? What? And a good afternoon to you, too. What do you want, Bob? Well, I'd like to come in. Please, Bob, I'm exhausted. I was worried about you. When you didn't show up for your classes, I tried to call, but there was no answer. Okay, so I took a personal day, so sue me. Oh. Hey, what's gotten into you? Nothing. I, I just don't feel well. Well, okay. I don't suppose that you've heard the news then. Please, Bob, I just want to go back to bed. Dean Higgins is dead. What? What are you talking about? Last night, he was murdered right in his office. But I, I just saw him last night, and he was fine. Well, uh, apparently someone killed him. They didn't just kill him. What do you mean? I just came from the police station. I was talking with a Detective Murdoch. He told me that whoever killed the Dean had to have had incredible strength. What? Oh my god, Bob. What did they do? Well, for one, they ripped out all of his organs. The top of his head was torn away. His brain was missing. Oh dear god. I think I'm gonna be... All right, all right, come on, come on. Let, let me help. Does his wife know? No, she doesn't know anything, only that he's dead. I thought it best that she didn't hear the gruesome details. <sighs> Do they have any idea who did it? <laughs> Not a clue. I'm sure that this Detective Murdoch will want to talk to you, since you seem to be the last person to have seen the Dean alive. Miss Collins! What are you doing in the locker room? I just wanted to congratulate you on such a remarkable win. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, but I still need to go grab a shower. Hmm. Don't you like me? Well, of course I do, Miss Collins. Then call me Erica. Hey, what is this? This is me taking my clothes off so that I can have a shower. <laughs> don't want to get blood all over them, do you? Miss Collins, now, now wait a minute. Don't you want this body? I want your body. All of it. Hey! In your soul. Get off me! What are you... Stop! Stop! Ah! Uh, come in. Professor Danvers. What are you doing in the Dean's office? <laughs> Detective, uh, I was appointed until a replacement could be named. Uh, what can I do for you, Detective Murdoch? Do you know a Robert Griffin? Well, of course, everyone knows Robert. He's the star quarterback of the football team. Not anymore. What are you talking about? He was found this morning in the gym locker room showers. Dead. What? What about... Betty Yarbrough. Betty Yar... Yeah, yeah, she's in one of my classes. You don't mean... Also found this morning at her parents' home. Her parents are somewhere in England. We are trying to get a hold of them. What the hell is going on? That's what I want to know. Both students had the same thing happen to them that happened to your dean. All of their vital organs were missing. Including their brains. Jeez. So what you were saying is that we have a, a psychopath on campus. I talked to the medical examiner. He is supposed to be calling me back. Excuse me. This is him. 
Hello? Yes, Daniel. What did you find out? What? What? That's impossible. You're kidding. Okay. I'll talk to you later. What did he say? On all of the bodies, there was a carving. Post-mortem. He just sent me a picture of it. Can you identify it? Hmm. Well, it looks Egyptian. But that's not why he called. Okay, why did he call? The bodies of Dean Higgins, Robert Griffin, and Betty Yarbrough are all missing. I don't mind telling you that now I am a little on edge. How can three bodies simply disappear from the morgue? As Murdoch ponders that question, you ponder on joining me for Act 3 shortly. A series of strange and frightening events are happening at the campus of Milton College. Two students and the Dean are dead, and now their bodies are missing. It is quite a perplexing problem that faces Detective Murdoch as he interviews the assistant medical examiner. Are you trying to tell me? I saw it. I swear to you, I saw it happen. Doctor. Stanley, and I am using that term very loosely. You will please explain to me again exactly what you saw. I knew no one would believe me, but I did see it. Just tell me again, what happened? I was in the morgue, going over paperwork when I heard something in the storage room. We had seven bodies waiting for autopsy in there. I saw that one, Dean Higgins. And the two students from yesterday walk in and, and... Go on. They opened each locker, and the bodies just got up and walked out of here. You do know how crazy that sounds. I know. Believe me, I know. What the hell is going on? Bob? Are, are you in here? Close the door, Erica. What are you doing with the lights off? I'm just thinking. About us? I don't know. Is there an us? Uh, of course there is, my love. Want to get naughty? He's Erica, haven't you been paying attention to what's going on? <laughs> That shouldn't stop us from having a little fun. Fun? Fun? I just got off the phone with Detective Murdoch. Four more students were found dead. You know, come to think of it, those four, plus Robert and Betty, they were all in your class, weren't they? What does that have to do? Oh, I don't know. It's just... It's all so, so macabre. Why don't you let me take your mind off everything? <laughs> Here, I'll pour us some wine. I hope you locked the door. <laughs> oh, you wicked <laughs> professor. You know, this is a side of you I've never seen. Maybe it's just the new me. <laughs> I tell you what. I have a special class tonight. Why don't you and that detective friend of yours stop by? Well, I didn't know you were teaching a night class. Oh, just just a one-time thing. Those papers from Professor Knox gives a wonderful ritual that's supposed to be done at midnight. I thought it might be fun for my students. Okay, Professor, I'm here. What now? Well, this is Erica Collins' classroom. She said that she was doing something special tonight. 
Do you know that it is almost midnight? I got an assistant medical examiner who is currently under observation. I got a killer who has quite the palate, and ten missing corpses. Mind telling me what I am doing here? Look, I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Come on. Erica? Why is it so dark in here? What's that scale doing over there? Ah, Professor Danvers and Detective Murdoch. I'm so glad you could make it. It's almost time. Let's open the blinds and let more light in from the moon. What's going on, Erica? Something wonderful that required your presence. Uh, Jesus. What is it? Her class. It's the missing corpses. That's impossible. What the hell is going on? It's some kind of ritual. I I can't decipher the words. Look, the corpses. They are moving. Come on, I think we better get out of here. No, gentlemen. It's almost midnight. Don't worry. I've summoned Anubis, who has sought favor in you, to help charter you in the afterlife. The hell is she talking about? If I remember correctly, I think Anubis is the Egyptian god who helps the helpless and guides lost souls to their... their... death. I hope that your hearts are not... Heavy. What does that mean? Anubis, the jackal god, watches over the dead and weighs their hearts to see how good the person was in this life. It is a new world that is upon us, and the wicked must be punished. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Danvers and Detective Murdoch stand frozen in fear as the students begin to walk toward them. Erica stands at the head of the room, smiling at her accomplishment. I'll be back shortly with a final word. I don't think that I could add much to the story that you have just heard. I can quote from author Muada Ashby from his Egyptian Book of the Dead. Never forget, the words are not the reality. Only reality is reality. Picture symbols are the idea. Words our confusion. Our cast included Crimson McKenzie, Jonathan Rosignol, Mick Davis, Mark Wheeler, Carter Sheriff, Jim Mitchell. The story was edited by Crimson McKenzie and under the direction of Winslow Swan. And now, a preview of our next tale. We aren't sure when it happened, Oh, there have always been stories of the forest, mostly to scare young children into behaving. But now, it seems those stories are quite accurate, don't you think? I'm trying my best to keep this town from not going completely mental. As far as anyone knows, there is a wild animal creating havoc in the forest. I think that's a bit of an understatement. Why do you say that? Three people mutilated beyond recognition is a bit more than just... Havoc. This is your host, Artemis Black, inviting you to return with us through the doorway to Nightmare for another adventure into the terrifying world of your imagination. 
Until next time, slumber peacefully. Epilogue. The butler did it. <laughs>